um, go forward, Karen LaFleur. Hi, everyone. Text expressionism and digital and beyond exhibit uh, that's on view. The animation uh, contains the visual, but the original piece also contained the music. I work with a musician uh, on all my animations. Uh, this is an original composition of hers, uh, and it's her performance. The piece Floor is Dance, which is this animation you see, is about hope. And when, during the pandemic, I was thinking of all the hopes we had, even though we were sheltering in our own little places. And then I started to think of that worldwide and the power of that worldwide hope. So this is Flora's dance. <laughs> So we were asked tonight to talk about three rather large topics, our artwork, women in technology, and expressionism um, in less than 10 minutes. So I'm gonna narrow my focus down to communication because it's really important to me having come through some communication difficulties as a child and through adulthood. In general, conversation for me is, um, is difficult. So the computer has allowed a communication tool that I didn't have in the pre-digital days. And previously, I had uh, a lot of medical issues that the technology brought me through. Um, it brought me through my dyslexia. Um, and now it's an integral part of my creative artwork since uh, the early 80s. So communication is a big key factor uh, going digitally for me. So the consequence of having these inabilities to communicate when I was younger um, is that I ended up fine-tuning observation and studying community dynamic. The piece that you see here is called uh, Tidal, Pool uh, Tidal Pool Diary. And what I did was over an eight-month period, I would visit this one tidal pool in the beach near me and I wouldn't do anything. I just observe who was there, what was happening, how much water, I had the whole pool shifted across the beach, things like that. And then I would go home to my studio and I would create these square panels, of which there are a lot more than these. But once I started to put them together, I realized that observation was also a conversation. And so each piece was communicating with me and overall we had a group conversation. So I find that technology levels the communication field for me because, you know, even between the genders, because it's, it's kind of like having a puppy. You know, you go out for a walk and suddenly you're talking with your neighbor and you're having a conversation. And so it gave me sort of a common denominator to have that platform. Um, and a lot of women struggle with that sometimes in a, in a you know, multiple gender conversational group that they'll step back and observe more rather than jump into the conversation. Uh, but when the computer is present, I find anyways, from my experience, the conversation just opens up with the synergy of interior and exterior worlds. And that can be what you say to yourself and how you present yourself to the world. It can be between environments. It can be between abstract forms on the screen. And I do this by tapping into this heightened power of observation and uh, community dynamics that I've honed over the years. So the next piece I want to show you is called mycelium. And these are the tiny root-like fibers in the soil that make up this living organism and what we see on the surface are the little mushrooms that come up. But the organism is actually nothing but a giant communication network. And so the computer allows me to be able to express what I can imagine is going on underneath the soil. 
all these conversations that are happening that I couldn't express in traditional mediums because of physical disabilities and things like this. Um, so again, it's a huge communication tool for me, not only in my artwork, but speaking with everybody. Um, that's everybody, gender, worldwide. It, it's opened up huge doors for me. Um, so whether my artwork is organic or mechanical, as you can see here in these examples, it still speaks to community. It still speaks to the individual parts that are working in unison with other parts to create a holistic whole, so to speak. Um, and in doing so, I find that we as artists um, tend to express ourselves through the computer, we end up creating our own universes. And these universes move, they have sound, they have light, they can spin around their perspective, go 3D, go virtual, wherever, wherever. And I'm finding that level of conversation between creative artists on technology is opening up bigger and bigger uh, as the technology pushes us out further into a different creative field. So I find that as a woman artist, it gives me an equal footing in the conversation of art. And to expressionism as a term and as a concept with its focus on the artistic human expression rather than a particular style or sensibility, um, it, it ends up give, um, turning the focus onto a common conversation point that all of us can come together on. So that's my reason. Fascinating and um, wow, there, there is a pervasive uh, story that runs through it uh, that we can all relate to. Men certainly uh, as artists deal with difficulties, but reading in the chat, um, someone had written while well, listening to you as well, I think it was Holly Gordon about things where, thing, when things are done behind curtains and there is no uh, gender, people aren't identified that often women, women do much better than would be expected. And yet I do love what I hear a lot of people saying um, here, and that is that, you know, as women, we bring something different to the table. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, I personally feel I'm not trying to be a man and I feel what we're offering is, 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 is uh, so necessary to the sustenance of the universe. So thank you. Our next presenter is Renata Janisuska. This is the Imperial Air. You you could say that it's the poster child for expressionism, digital and beyond. This work has been described by one critic as falling somewhere on the spectrum between beauty and terror. And it's it's part of a series of works that I did last spring where I create large biomorphic shapes using an AI program. My own custom brushes to decorate the shape. And I used a lot of diagonal emphasis these compositions. I was in particular thinking of the work of Géricault, the French 19th century painter who his best known work was The Raft of the Medusa where it's a, an enormous painting. And when you're working in the digital realm, you can, you can expand space in, in, a, in, a, in a very interesting way. So when I conceived of these works, I conceived of them as heroic tableau that were not on this earth. So I used skyscapes, put the, the shapes in and the colors of the sky were unearthly. And I also added usually clouds to give some depth to the composition and also to give some texture. If you are interested to see how I create the shapes, Cynthia Rubin and I spoke in July of 2021 and I gave a demonstration of, this, of the software and the steps that I take to create these particular elements. It's on the Textpressionism YouTube channel. And the thing I said at that time to myself was I wanted to increase the density and complexity of my work. So this is a piece that was done in February of 2021. 
And it has the elements, again, the same um, shapes that I create, but they have the ones on the right-hand side have an intended shimmer. And I used custom brushes for the whole of this painting as well. And what I did was I, I also used um, a still frame from one of my animations as a background to, to anchor the composition to. I've been making animations since February of 2021, and I've progressed a great deal in that time period. I, I really enjoy making my paintings come alive, and I also make animations solely that are based on forms and colors that I choose just for that particular form of art. But sometimes I'll, I'll use a painting as well as a, back, as a backdrop. Um, as I said, there, there's this grid at the back that uh, came from the animation, and I used a brush to put the tiny dots all over it. And it, it, it was something akin to stitching a tapestry or, believe it or not, putting icing on top of a cupcake. So there's a, a domestic quality to some of the work that I do for me. As a child, I was taught embroidery and I had to do petty point until I couldn't stand it anymore. It felt like a form of torture, but now I find myself enjoying those kinds of work where it's quite labor intensive and you you enter into the flow state while you're working on, on the pieces. Giovanna, that woman. Let me share my screen. So this is uh, the, the metaverse. Uh, I can show you this as a one of the uh, transformation. There's a one of the, the really popular collections I have on, uh, on OpenSea. I have a, like, a, I saw like a 300 items for this collection. So this is a metaverse. Uh, if, but I never tell the public about my story. Like before the pandemic, um, there was a like I had a company. That's how I met uh, Davanti. It's a VR company. I have a problem with partners because uh, it was actually my idea, my pitch deck. It used me to get to the accelerator to get to the coalition because we were agree, like a fifty. He registered the company and he just uh, sent me a quick the, the notification email and the, it end up like I only have a five percent in front of a lot of uh, investor and the other shareholder. He said, "Oh, Giovanna." You know why you, you are the, the poorest person in our group and you know you know you're a woman you cannot get any fun so i was a humiliated and also um doing the accelerator program he said to all the other sada founders say oh giovanna is a crazy artist don't listen to her she can do it and the, the worst thing that happened to me because we have a demo day and that was a december he just chicken out so he just want to push me at the front to to pitch all the investors so that was a story and then I've been fortunate because I may take Prejunisia because I made the bank. Um, during that time, I sh I shot the uh, 360 uh, video of in Soho. So uh, actually, I didn't find the bounty. The bounty found me, and uh, he introduced me to Colin. Uh, and by the time, you know, our company is still running, so I still try to do a lot of a VR and the 3D render case project. And the, the very funny because, uh, uh, like, last last year, it was a January, he just said, oh, you know, like, we have to close this company, we're all broke, we don't have a funding, blah, blah, blah. But actually, he, he built all the customer with his uh, new entity. So that's what happened. But I'm being so fortunate, right? I was so dead because one of my, my, my collector, he, he found me, he gave me my first commission, so I create my NFT. And I keep selling, selling, selling. And now I even coach other NFTs anti marketplace funder. Well, uh, I have a very strong feeling, so that's why I have this. You know, I feel like like women can be beautiful, and also uh, women can be hot as a rock. And the other thing is, that I'm not feminist. I never consider myself like a like a aggressive feminist. It's just because I feel like if a woman can be higher position, let women be on the top. We don't need to have a male leaders all the time. You know, give a woman a chance. Okay, we shouldn't have a more equal opportunity.
International Women's Month. I was thinking that okay, let's do something for International Women's Month. I always tell I I produce a lot of a uh, uh, like a tutorial like the people they want to utilize NFT as a, like alternative income, especially for artists. Like I really like to help the community, and I'm so grateful. Uh, my first piece so in one day. I believe that's because uh, take Christian Nisi and feature me on Instagram. I really like this uh, whole idea about decentralized social uh, sculpture. That's the spirit. You have fresh perspective, and uh, I like what you said about women. We're not just soft. We're we're hard. We're powerful as rock, and we endure. And there's a it's not all a big soft pillow situation here. So I I thought you're your perspective was very fresh.